Now, domestic hotel room prices are at their cheapest for five years. According to the website Hotels.com, the cost of staying at a British hotel has fallen by 16% this year. Southampton saw the biggest fall. Rooms there can be booked for a third of what they cost six months ago. That's the biggest discount found in a survey of 19 European countries. But according to another report for Tui Travel, almost half of British holidaymakers heading abroad plan to benefit from the recession to trade up to five-star hotels at three-star prices. So is it better value to stay at home or go abroad? And where should we look to find the best deals? Let's talk to two of the biggest names in the international travel industry. Dermot Blasland is the managing director of Thompson and First Choice Holidays, which merged two years ago to form Chewy Travel. He's in our central London studio. And with a little bit of luck, David Roche, the global president of the website Hotels.com, will join me in a few minutes too. So, sir, you are definitely there. That's nice to see you. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we were looking uh, at prices abroad. It all seems rather attractive, but of course there is the currency issue, isn't there? I saw that today with the pound trading at something like 1.1 euros, it won't seem that cheap in Europe, will it? Uh, you'd think that. Of course, we've bought the currency at better rates than that because we're not buying at today's rates. But the uh, interesting thing is, the, particularly the Eurozone, the hoteliers are, have been cutting the rates, much like the example you've just shown about UK rates. So we're passing that through into the holiday prices. The other factor to bear in mind, of course, is the fuel is at a much lower rate than it was a year ago. So that's a positive that's helping. Um, so in, in terms of total value, um, I think the euro is still competing uh, quite strongly. What customers are also doing is um, figuring, exactly as you said, that some five-star hotels are cutting their rates quite dramatically, so there's tremendous value to be had. In addition, they're going on 10 and 11 nights. Instead of going for 14, some customers are saying, I still want to go, but I'll, I'll budget a little bit more carefully by going for a 10 or 11 night holiday. So are you saying, Dermot, that finally some of these overseas hoteliers have woken up? But I asked that because I was in uh, Spain, I was in Marbella over the new year, and it was absolutely empty. And a couple of the uh, restaurateurs said to me, you know, where are the British? Where have they gone? What's happened to your tourists? Well, uh, I'm very surprised you were in Malaga, but I'm sure you had a nice time. The, um, where they are is in Sharm El Sheikh. Uh, they're in Turkey. Uh, for next summer they're beginning to book Cuba so you are quite right there's a lot of fantastic developments going oh, I see, on. Dermot. So what you're saying is I'm a, bit, I'm a bit out of fashion going to Marbella I'll have to brush up on my, uh, on my knowledge of overseas uh, destinations. What about the UK market though because uh, I keep reading that more and more British tourists are staying at home uh, if that's the case why are hotel rooms uh, the price of hotel rooms falling you would expect well, them to be going up uh, yes, it's actually interesting because uh, I'm not sure that Southampton, I mean, much as I love Southampton, um, is actually an alternative to going on a be beach holiday. Um, the, the other thing that did um, surprise me, you were quite right about these reductions, but the bed night rates were still quite expensive. Um, so the, uh, the other factor is for this year, a lot of people decided to stay home because of the financial uncertainty and with, you know, wish to avoid, some customers this was, to avoid the financial commitment. What we're, our own research and some Morgan Stanley research into the overseas leisure market is picking up, um, people are much more confident and optimistic about their financial position for next year and more people are planning to go abroad and spend more uh, than they did this time last year when we asked the same question. I find so, all that very surprising because the theme all day at the TUC conference has been cutbacks. Uh, we all know that we've got to tighten our belts. Uh, I think most of us can live without a holiday. How do you sell a holiday in this kind of environment when clearly people have other priorities? I'm not so sure I actually agree with you. Um, I think the holiday is an essential uh, for a lot of people now. It's something they look forward to. And it works two ways. One is when the economic environment is very positive, obviously people look forward to travelling. I think um, there are some that are obviously economically challenged, will, will not go. But I think the, for those that are in work, they've got more disposable income because of the low interest rates. And also it's something to look forward to. Dermot, you've obviously done a lot of research. I didn't do enough research because I went to unfashionable old Spain and you can <laughs> give me a tip afterwards. But uh, give a tip to all our viewers. Where now in the world...
pound for pound is the best value for the average British tourist? Well, uh, if, uh, if you take long haul, I would say Cuba because they price in sterling, so there's no exchange rate uh, deterioration, and there's fantastic value there. Mexico is obviously recovering and is feeding very good rates in, so that would be long haul. Uh, I would say um, uh, it would be Turkey and Sharm el Sheikh. I think you'd find there's tremendous value. But one must remember... Sharm el Sheikh, of course, being in Egypt. In Egypt, yes, um, the, uh, on the Red Sea. But one mustn't forget, if you take the Balearics, I mean, one in five, 20% of the whole market still goes to Mallorca, which is a tremendous, uh, I think, holiday destination. And I think you're quite right. You picked up, I think, um, the Spanish uh, industry is responding. They're beginning to realize they've got to up their game and offer, offer value. Um, so I think the, um, you know, re Egypt and Turkey were the terrific value, but there, if for customers who are looking now and are smart purchasers, there's tremendous value to be had. All right, Dermot, stay with, uh, with us because we are joined by David Roach, who has battled through the British weather. He's absolutely dripping, it's but well done for, for, for getting here. What does this tell you about the holiday market? Why do people go overseas? Yes, well, the sun. The sun, the sun. <laughs> exactly. You're a living uh, example of that. We heard uh, Dermot there talking about... Um, the best value uh, overseas holidays, Egypt, perhaps Turkey, Cuba, would you agree? Well, um, we are probably a little bit more exposed to the city break market and some of the unmanaged corporate travel markets uh, than Dermot is. Um, we're seeing value really all over the place. There's great value for UK consumers traveling within the UK because prices have fallen so much. In fact, Hotels.com's price index, our hotel price index, comes out today. It shows, you know, pricing has fallen by 16% here. Globally, by 17%, but of course, uh, some of the times because of the currency, UK consumers aren't getting as much of the value of those falls you know, as they were before. For example, it's still 2% more expensive in Paris for UK consumers. David Roach, heroic performance uh, for getting in. Many thanks. Dimmer Blasman, thanks, thanks to you too. We do appreciate it. Now, today's numbers, the FTSE 100 closed up 23 points.